Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the Pelstar AT1500 Charlie Victor antenna tuner. Now this tuner here has uh, had a problem with the, the rotary inductor. When I would crank this, my settings and the loading would, would be erratic. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, pull this out of service and uh, see what's wrong with the, uh, the, the uh, rotary coil inside here. Now I've already uh, repaired this, but I'm going to tell you what I found. So we come over here, we got the cover off, and here's the rotary inductor right here. So one of the first things you want to do <coughs> is uh, to take this uh, antenna tool and you want to get yourself a, if you have one, which is nice, a, a di digital voltmeter. Now this digital voltmeter here has a uh, where the ohms are at, it has a function for checking diodes. And what that does is when you are checking a diode, you listen for the beep continuity. I'm shorting the test leads here. Right there is a good solid connection. So what I did was I took the digital voltmeter and I put some uh, jumpers here on the ends of the test probe. There's the other one right here. So I got two jumpers. So, so uh, now I'm going to check out this rotary inductor and see what the problem is. I know the problem actually is it's something's not making contact. And what I found is I take this here and one side of the uh, test leads, I, I put it to this uh, strap right here. And it's a, it's under pressure, see, you can, you can, it bends up and down. So when you, when you're, uh, oh, I just knocked it out of calibration too, but one, one hand here. Anyway, when I, when I rotate this handle, you see this slide going across the coil. Okay. Now I got one side of the test meter to this sliding bar. The bar is under pressure because it has springs and as the coil goes around you see the coil is not quite circular so there's a wobble to it. So that's what that spring does. It, it does hold pressure this disc against the coil. So now I go over on the other side of the coil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the continuity through the coil as I'm cranking. So I go over the other, the back side of this tuner and there's the other bar right here. And there you hear a nice steady tone. And you also see the meter says 0 .001. Now that's in the check diode. If I went to ohms, I'm showing 0 0.6. Well, first I'll show you the, the diode. This is a much better diode check. So now I got a tone. I can listen. So now I, when I come over here and start cranking, you see this slide going across here. And if you listen, you can hear the tone has not changed. There's a good solid connection. So that means I have a good connection from this bar, the rotor, disc, and the coils all making solid contact. Now before, I didn't have that. It was erratic. And it would sound like that as I was cranking this, uh, this rotary coil, it was sounding like this. And the meter was going, just going crazy and I was getting opens and it was just all kinds of uh, crazy things. So. Anyway, uh, when you crank this there, you'll find the bad spots on the, on the rotary here, on the coil. 
and uh, it'll just it'll get raspy as you as you're actually cranking you'll hear all that raspy sound the tone will be solid that's one indication now that proved that there's something wrong with the uh, the coil the mechanism mechanical now if you don't have a, a, a DVM with a diode function you can go to ohms and I'm on the lowest scale which is 200 0 200 ohms and there it is there 0.6 I got six tenths of an ohm resistance and you should be able to crank this thing and I'm cranking it I'm cranking it here and you can see it's hardly fluctuating from 0.7 to 0.6 and I'm still cranking here and it's still going all the way you go all the way to the each end back and forth now this just shows me that I, my repair job was correct. It, it did fix it. Between, between the, the solid tone uh, back and forth on the, on the coil, I'm at the end right now. And, uh, and then using the resistors uh, measurement with the uh, di digital voltmeter, since uh, you know, some people may not have a diode check on it with a tone. Uh, it shows that I have, re I have resolved the problem. Now I'm going to tell you what the problem is and how to fix that. Okay, so we got that. So now you determine that the coil, something here is, is not right. All right, so you, you can take this meter back off. Turn your meter off right now. Now let's see here. I got a, get a pencil here. Okay, the well, first thing you want to do is wipe the coil off. Make sure the coil is clean. Now you can use some, uh, oh, you know, hand towels, put some alcohol on it, hold over on this side here like this with one hand, and then the other, on the other hand, you crank it, you crank it, you crank the coil. And you'll just go back and forth like this as you're cranking, and you know, move it around, you, see, you look at it, it's, oh, it's dirty, you put a little more alcohol, strip of alcohol down here, put it back on there, and you crank it some more, and you're, and you're cleaning this coil. Once you got the coil cleaned, then what you want to do, and this is important because this is one thing that usually goes wrong with these things. See this bar right here where this rotary connector rolls on? Uh, if that becomes uh, dry or it becomes oxida uh, oxidized just from the air, uh, this rotary uh, connector here, this, this roller, will not make contact with this bar. That gives you an intermittent, and that's what, uh, one of the problems with this thing. So what you end up with is the, uh, as you're cranking to get your antenna tuned, tune your antenna, it's, it's fluctuating all over. So what you got to do is you got to, once again, you got to clean this bar. And if you got maybe a little bit of a real fine steel wool, you can clean the bar also. Now you notice this bar here is dark in color. That's because there's a grease on there, and that's a secret. When these things are made, they come from the factory, from Pelstar, they got a light, very light coating of grease. And eventually, uh, I found that the, the coating on mine was so, so thin and sporadic that uh, I was having dead spots in here. So what I did was I got some of this, uh, it's called an antioxidant compound, right here, it's in a tube. And it's, it's, it's uh, for aluminum to aluminum. A joint compound and it uh, makes electrical contact and as you can see it's uh, uh, OX-400 antioxidant compound GB I got that uh, oh I don't know where it was uh, Ace Hardware or something like that but it's it's the uh, grease that you put when you're when you're putting a beam together and you you got the aluminum joints and you spread that on there and then you the joints go together and, it, and then they won't uh, seize up on you after a few years and you, you know getting water and, it, and all that on there so but it makes electrical contact too so I put that on this bar I did this about two years ago I put that on a bar and that fixed my problem well this time now this is uh, December 31st 2012 hey a few more hours will be New Year's anyway that was not my problem this time I still clean. I still made sure this was clean, and it was in real good shape. This has still got plenty uh, grease on it, and it's still activated yet. It's not uh, dried out. But I found that the uh, 
the problem was down in here this coil goes from here to there it's wound okay and then when this coil here comes around it goes down inside down inside here and I'll find a good view on that there it is right there right here let me see if I get something better right here is the contact see the screwdriver and, it's, and there's a uh, piece of metal there, and that that runs that contacts with the coil on this end and that has to be cleaned also on this end the same same problem right here right here is this there's my screwdriver right there there's do you see that there's, a, there's a, like a brass uh, bearing there and then, then there's this, this uh, metal that's under pressure and that comes back out of here in the back and makes your the other side the coil. Well, th those two contacts have to be clean. The trouble is, how do you clean them? And you can't really get down in there. And they should be clean and lubricated because this thing is going around. See, it is it has cranked around. You do crank it around. So what I use here, and I, and this worked perfect, was this uh, deoxin uh, D5. Very expensive. This little can. Five ounces cost seventeen dollars. I, I had a ship, you know, pay shipping on it and all that. So run me seventeen dollars for this little can. You probably, if you find a local somewhere, it probably costs you only about ten. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, you take that and you get down in here and you spray that, spray that, and you spray the one in the back with this thing. And then you, you crank this thing uh, back and forth the whole length of the coil three or four times. You go back and forth, you know, keep on going back and forth like that. And maybe get another shot and down in there. And when I did that, and then I made my check again, going back over here, right here, right where the spring is at. And I went back, back over here. Oh, trying to work with one hand, and it's <laughs> not too good, but clip there, put my meter there, and put my meter there. Uh, turn the meter back on and put it back on tone. It's, the tone's the best. Then I crank it and I had no more erratic. Nothing's erratic anymore. Everything is good. So that's going to be great. I'm not going to have any more rotor problems for at least another year or more. There is one little, uh, one more little thing I did was I, put, I had some springs. I, I saved when I tear things apart and have springs on, I save them. And what I, what I was fortunate of, I had I had enough springs saved up that I put an additional spring right here, right here, the little that give give this mechanism more pressure on the coil. And I had exact same spring, another one, and I added on this side. I just stuck it I stuck it up on here. And, and then put it through the, uh, the insulating of the uh, rotor here, stuck it on there. So it did give me a little more down pressure on this wheel. One more thing, you want to uh, you want to make sure that this wheel here is clean on the inside, right here. You put a rag on there, and the other hand you crank it around and make sure that, that that connection in here, right in here, is clean of all dirt and grease. That makes the it. Well, that actually makes contact on each side of the winding. Makes good solid contact. So you got the, actually this, this mechanism makes two contacts on each winding there as you roll it. So you have two surfaces to make contact. If one, one side's bad, don't matter because the other side made contact, see? Now, one other thing you want to do is uh, see this, this is nylon gear here. Do not grease that. Do put any, don't, put any, don't put any kind of grease or anything on there. Uh, the grease and all that may deteriorate that over 10 years, maybe, <laughs> whatever. They found that out on Drake radios, on the Force, uh, the, uh, uh, Force series of Drakes and all that. And people were greasing them and all that, and they had plastic gears and all, and it was uh, causing it to become brittle and, and the teeth would break off and, st and stuff like that. So, And by the way, the deoxin here, deoxin here can be sprayed down inside the variables here right down in the joints there on both variables front and back and you can clean your uh, your uh, wafer switches back here with it too so that takes care of that so uh, you shouldn't have any more problems with the uh, intermittent
on the on the, on the rotor. Okay, so this session is uh, finished. All I got to do is put the cover on, and I'm going to be uh, in good shape for uh, operating, uh, uh, going from uh, 160 to uh, 10 meters.